Hey everyone, welcome in to a, another daily editorial here on the KE Report. We're chatting with Jordan Royburn, founder and editor of the Daily Gold. Now, Jordan, it's a good day for the precious metals again today. As I look on my screen, we have gold trading up just above 1980. Silver is outperforming gold. It's closing in on that $26 level. These are both the future contracts that I'm referring to. And on top of that, we see the stocks doing very well. GDX, that's up 2.5%. GDXJ, that's up almost 4% as we're chatting. SIL, the Global Silver Miners ETF, that's up over 3% as well. What do you think's most noteworthy about this move here, Jordan, where it seems like gold continuing to move up, but we're actually seeing the stocks continue to take part? Again, the larger stocks are taking part, but even on my screen today, I'm seeing some of the juniors at least get a little bit more life. Well, the key for me coming into the week, Corey, was if we step back for a second, the miners have been consolidating very bullishly. And coming into the week, you know, gold had resistance, closing resistance around 1960. And so my thinking was if we get this breakout out of these patterns from the miners, these ETFs and indices, that's probably going to cons- coincide with gold breaking above 1960. And that's what we saw yesterday. Although the candles in the miners were not that impressive, uh, they they sold off into the close, so they didn't really keep the gains. But today we're seeing really strong follow through, clear evidence of a breakout. And as we know, and as we've talked about, the miners have been leading this consolidation. I mean, not they've yeah they've been not leading, but really outperforming the metals. I mean, even the silver stocks have been outperforming silver. I mean, we noted that the miners were consolidating around their highs while gold and silver, they were well off their highs during this correction. And we've noted, and I'm sure other guests have as well, how bullish of a development this is. And, you know, for me, I like to be more conservative. And so looking at the charts of the metals, I defaulted to these are probably going to require at least a couple more months to consolidate. But at the same time, I did mention, you know, in 2009, we saw the miners make higher highs while gold was consolidating. And for me, it just circles back to the key resistance for gold was 1960, you know, 1970. And the fact that gold was able to take that out, that's uh, allowing the miners to break out here and make higher highs. And so even prior to this week, it was clear that the miners were in a bullish consolidation. You know, you can you can call it a pennant. You can maybe even call it a flag pattern because for a a flag like consolidation or a pennant, the market in those consolidations, it at the most it retraces 38 percent. So I think that's what the miners did, depending on how you measure it. I think I mentioned it two or three weeks ago, uh, how they were holding above those levels, whereas gold and silver were not. And so. There's a little bit of room here for the miners to move. I mean, I don't have the targets handy, but over the weekend I did potential upside targets on, you know, all these uh, mining indices. And, you know, GDXJ, for example, I think I mentioned this could approach 55 and perhaps as high as 57 because the high, the 2020 high is about 62, 63. There's some resistance at 57, 58. So just for example, the breakout in GDXJ, which is trading just below 51 right now, I think there's targets up to 57. So short term, I think we're going to see more gains in the sector. I mean, we could snap back here and do a little retest, but you know, we could kind of see a little bit of FOMO buying here in the next couple of days, given the breakout from these very bullish short term patterns. So I, I think we're going to see the miners continue to trend higher here in the short term. And, uh, you know, with respect to the metals, gold has some resistance around 2000. I mean, if it can surpass that, you know, then it would probably run up to 2050 or so close to the uh, all time high. But looking at gold, I don't think it's going to break to an all time high here in the next month or two. I could be wrong. I'm just I'm more keen on the stocks, more concerned with that. And I think the fact that, you know, gold is broken above 1960 you know, that, that's enough for the market to think that the miners are going to trade much higher here or not much higher, but, you know, materially higher here in the short term. Yeah, Jordan, it's nice to see everything lining up where silver is outperforming gold. 
the gold stocks are outperforming the metals, and the silver stocks are outperforming the gold stocks because SILJ is up the most today, and it's outperforming GDXJ. SIL is outperforming GDX. I mean, that's kind of what you want to see in a nice bullish move. And it's nice to see that the mining stocks have also been recently outperforming the general stock markets. Another thing that you want to see in a bullish move. But a couple of weeks back, you'd mentioned you still felt like we may have, at least in the metals, maybe not necessarily in the mining stocks, they could diverge, but at least in the metals, the potential for a few months of corrective moves. So would you see short term, you know, a bullish move in the metals and miners, but then maybe a corrective move setting in after that? Or do you think that there is enough fuel if we cleared some of these resistance levels to actually break out and get gold to a new all-time high and get silver breaking up through that $28, $29 level. Is there enough juice in this move or do you need more data? Probably need more data. And looking at, uh, I mean, it it depends where sentiment indicators are. And also, if you look at commodities, I saw a couple great charts on Twitter, but they're, they're starting to get, the sentiment in commodities is really starting to get overly bullish. And, you know, we're seeing the same thing as far as bonds, you know, bonds selling off sentiment is getting overly bearish. However, gold and silver, well, gold especially should really outperform, I think, when rates and bond yields roll over, you know, as the market gets more worried about a recession. So something interesting to watch will be gold and silver against commodities as a whole. So I think at least in the short term, that is a potential risk. For gold and silver and something that could prevent them from breaking out silver I, I there's a lot of reason if you look at the monthly and quarterly charts there's an awful lot of resistance at 28 29 so i i don't think it's going to break that in the uh near term i think gold is going to break above 2100 well before i mean i don't want to say way before but i i do see gold clearing 2100 and then at some point later on we'll probably see silver clear that 28 29 level so that's still pretty stiff resistance but i mean it you know the the miners they could be starting to discount i mean right now they're outperforming so they could be starting to discount silver at least returning to 27 28 29 and you know gold testing its all-time high but the the resistance for gold at 2070 or 2050 it's just it's so much less than the resistance that silver is facing at 27 28 29 so that still leaves me a little bit skeptical of silver you know in addition to if we if there's more concerns about a recession that that's going to give gold another reason to outperform silver so i'm not bearish on silver per se i just think the setup technically and fundamentally is more bullish for gold but nevertheless when we see gold breaking to a new all-time high that's going to pull silver higher ultimately but we need more data. I mean, it's possible that, I mean, the stocks have had a really good move. So if I'm right here and we have another push to the upside over the next month or two, you know, maybe that leads into some kind of a uh, correction and consolidation in the stocks for, you know, two, three, four months after that point, because they could be pretty overbought at that point. But the the stocks are really, I, they're really outperforming the metals. And so I would be more from a technical and market timing sense, I would really focus more on the stocks because they're they're leading this move higher. And I think that'll continue to be the case over the next year or so. Yeah, it is encouraging to see the stocks moving higher. And you know what? There does seem to be a bit more interest in the sector. And hey, who knows? Maybe today is the first day where some of the juniors start moving up broadly as well. Jordan, side market that we haven't touched on too much is the U.S. dollar. The dollar is down today, but the dollar was just over 100 on the dollar index. Any significance or are you watching anything in the chart for the dollar that could correlate over to any trading in precious metals? That's a really good question. I'm really not watching it just because the dollar has been trending higher with not only precious metals, but with commodities, which has been really interesting. So I don't know when we're going to see a big decline in the dollar. I honestly don't. You know, as I said, you know, typically the dollar peaks when the Fed starts hiking. So, I mean, if that's not the case this time, you know, something different could be going on. And it seems to me that, you know, maybe the dollar is not going to really decline significantly until we get into a recession and the, the Fed loosens policy again, and we get more fiscal stimulus, 
And, you know, if it's a global recession, you get a global recovery. So that, I think that's the scenario where the dollar could really roll over. But, I mean, here and now, it's trending up. And it's it's trending up, again, with precious metals and with commodities. So to me, that's not, you know, it's not really uh, hurting precious metals. And I think that will remain the case unless, the do- you know, something happens in the dollar really accelerates to the upside and it makes like a vertical move. Those are the scenarios where you can see precious metals get hit. But other than that, I don't think the dollar is really impacting uh, precious metals right now either way. Well, Jordan, I know you also look at intermarket analysis. And so I'd be curious if there's any insights you have when you compare gold to the general equities or maybe GDX or GDXJ to the general equities. Are you seeing anything there that's more constructive just because it seems like for the first quarter of this year and, and even heading into April that there has been some outperformance in the precious metals over the general equities. Yeah, I think the action is really constructive. I think in the last week or so, we saw gold against the S&P test and bounce from its 200-day moving moving average. So that's positive. And the stocks are also, you, know, you look at GDX, GDXJ, they're also outperforming the stock market this is, I mean, this is a new bull market. This is what you get in a bull market where gold and gold stocks, they're outperforming everything. You know, when they're not, you're not in a real bull market. So I know it's kind of a master of the obvious statement, but there's really not much color I can add to that. I mean, they're outperforming. I think they'll continue to outperform. And, you know, we have to remember that the stock market Right, you know, we talked about it at the end of the last interview. The stock market and economy really getting into trouble. I mean, none of us want that to happen, but if and when that happens, I mean, that's bullish for precious metals, both in real and nominal terms. You know, and that's when you get the biggest and best moves in this sector. And you know, looking at gold against the S and P, gold stocks against the S and P, also gold stocks against gold. I mean, all these charts have super bullish setups not just looking out like over the next three or six months, but I mean, potentially over the next two or three years. These are some seriously bullish looking setups where, I mean, you could have huge multi-year breakouts in some of these ratios. And I, I think we're just at the beginning of those moves. We're going to see pullbacks at some point, but clearly the new primary trend is a bull market in precious metals. Again, not just the nominal terms, because we've seen... We've seen it in nominal terms off and on, but rarely in real real terms over the last five years, but in real terms as well. Well, that's encouraging. Finally, we are starting to see the stocks, the gold stocks outperform the U.S. markets and even the underlying precious metals. That outperformance to the S&P for, let's say, GDX has been pretty consistent all this year. So could be very early on, as you said, Jordan, and a much longer run for these gold stocks because they really have been left out of a lot of the rallies recently when you consider just what U.S. equities have done. So we'll see where this is all taking us, but you have outlined some pretty encouraging aspects for all the gold investors and gold stock investors. Jordan, thank you for your time this week. We'll chat again next week, and hopefully these trends, at least for the gold stocks and us gold investors, continue. Have a great rest of your week, Jordan.